welcome, friends, to Shinkatika Island Library's Tales for Tots. Let's go ahead and get started. Hands go up, hands go down. I can turn myself around. I can stand on one shoe. I can listen, so can you. I can sit, I'll show you how. Story time is starting now. Hi boys and girls, my name is Miss Susan and today I will be reading two fun books for you about winter. And the first book that I'm going to read for you is called The Mitten. The Mitten is an old story and this book was retold by a man named Jim Aylesworth and it's illustrated by Barbara McClintock. And this is one of my favorite wintertime stories. So let me get started. The Mitten. Once upon a time, there was a happy little boy who loved to play. Yes, he did. In the spring, he loved to climb trees and peek in at baby birds. In the summer, he loved to chase the golden butterflies. In the autumn, he loved to play in piles of golden leaves. And in the winter, he loved to play in the white, white snow. And every winter, because she loved him, the little boy's grandmother would knit a great warm woolen hat that he could pull down over his little ears, a long warm woolen scarf that he could wrap two times around his little neck, and a pair of warm woolen mittens for his cold little hands. And on the cold, cold day of this story, the little boy dressed himself warmly in his hat and his scarf and his mittens, and he went outside to play. He played and he played and he played. But when at last he came inside, it was discovered that one of his mittens was lost. Oh no, said the little boy. Don't worry, said the grandmother. We'll find it tomorrow. You've had enough of the cold for one day. And because she loved him, she made him a mug of steaming hot chocolate. In the meantime, just while the little boy was sipping his hot chocolate, a squirrel came along and saw the lost mitten lying on the snow. Brr, said the squirrel, my toes are as cold as ice. This mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. So the squirrel crawled into the little boy's mitten to warm his toes. The squirrel found the mitten quite warm and very comfortable, and soon he was so nice and toasty in there that he fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a rabbit. Burr, said the rabbit, let me come in. No room, said the squirrel, go away. Please, begged the rabbit, my toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. Oh, okay, said the squirrel, you can come in. And the rabbit crawled in. It was a bit tight in there for two. Nevertheless, with a little budging over, they were able to manage. And very soon they were nice and toasty warm, and they fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a fox. Burr, said the fox, let me come in. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel, go away. Please, begged the fox, my toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes 
would feel so nice. <sighs> okay, said the rabbit. Oh, okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. And the fox squeezed in. It was really crowded in there now with three. Nevertheless, the mittens stretched out enough and soon they were nice and toasty warm. But just when they had fallen sound asleep, along came a bear. Burr, said the bear, let me come in. No room, said the fox. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the bear. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. Oh, okay, said the fox. Oh, okay, said the rabbit. Oh, okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. I don't know if a bear can fit. But the bear squeezed and pushed and squeezed and pushed and squeezed and pushed until at last he got himself in. It was very cramped in there with the four of them all squished together like that. Soon they were nice and toasty warm, and soon they all fell sound asleep. But just then, along came a little mouse. Burr, said the little mouse in a teeny tiny voice. Let me come in. No room, said the bear. No room, said the fox. No room, said the rabbit. No room, said the squirrel. Go away. Please, begged the little mouse. My toes are cold as ice. Your mitten looks so cozy and warm toes would feel so nice. We can't, said the bear. Too full, said the fox. No way, said the rabbit. Impossible, said the squirrel. Go away, please, said the little mousie. I'm just a little mouse. Oh, okay, said the bear. Oh, okay, said the fox. Oh, okay, said the rabbit. Oh, okay, said the squirrel. You can come in. And they all held their breath while the little mouse carefully squeezed into a teeny tiny spot and for a minute all was well until suddenly the bear and the fox and the rabbit and the squirrel all had to take a great big deep breath of air and as they did the mitten burst apart and spilled them all out onto the snow. What a shame, said the bear. What a shame, said the fox. What a shame, said the rabbit. What a shame, said the squirrel. Oh, it is, said the little mouse. A terrible, terrible shame. And then, one by one, the mouse the bear, the fox, the rabbit, and the squirrel all went off to find another place to warm their toes. In the morning, the little boy and his grandmother went out looking for the lost mitten. Soon they came upon the bits and pieces of yarn lying in the snow. What could have happened? asked the little boy. I have no idea, said the grandmother, but don't worry, I can knit another. And because she loved him, that's exactly what she did. 
And that's the end of our story. That was the mitten. Hi, boys and girls. Now, now, before we start reading, we're going to do a little stretching. Are you ready? I'm Miss Linda, and this is Miss Barbara. Ready, Barbara? We're ready. Let's Everybody go. Everybody stand up. Stand up tall. Very stretching. Everybody, Everybody reach up high. high. Stretching, stretching, stretching to the sky. Swaying left and swaying right. Blinking in, in the sky at night. Everybody, Everybody reach up, up high. high. Stretching, stretching, stretching to the sky. Oh, they did a good job on that. Absolutely. Are you ready for five little monkeys? You can get your hands up. Five little Whoa. monkeys. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Two little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. One little monkey jumping on the bed. He fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Okay, we're just about ready for another story. So let's get ready. Two, Two little hands go clap, clap, clap. Two little feet go tap, tap, tap. Two little hands go thump, thump, thump. Two little feet go jump, jump, jump. One little body turns around. And one, one little child sits quietly down. Okay, boys and girls, the next story that we're going to read today is called The Snowy Day. This is another one of my favorite wintertime books. This book was written by Ezra Jack Keats. And you can see that this one won an award. It won a gold medal for having beautiful pictures, and that's part of why I like this book so much. So let's go ahead and read The Snowy Day. One morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, crunch, crunch. His feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. And he walked with his toes pointing in like this. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop on top of Peter's head.
he thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight. But he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So he made a smiling snowman and he made snow angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great big tall heaping mountain of snow and he slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He, pick, he packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. Do you think it melted? While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere and new snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. And that's the end. The snowy day. Thank you friends for joining us for Tales for Tots. We hope that you join us next time. And now, we wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. And we clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this.